pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at uh, 5.02 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Dylan. Here. Hallie. Here. Doug. Here. And I'm here. Um, Gaston is absent. So we are four present and one absent. And next we move on to public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? If so, please indicate that by hitting the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And we have someone here for public comment. All right. Miss Javaroli. Javaroli. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I, um, my name is Catherine Chiavaroli. I'm representing Lincoln Real Estate in town. And I would like to speak on behalf of one of my new tenants for a moment, if I might. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am. Um, Formerly leased a commercial space located at 41 Boltwood Walk to Hazel's Blue Lagoon uh, and associates, including Patrick Chapman and Junior Williams. Uh, they have since been evicted by court order as of August 1st, 2023. I'm hoping Steve passed along an email to you all, which um, included the eviction notice as well as um, part of the state law regarding liquor licenses. They have not returned their liquor licenses or given it up. Um, we have a new tenant whose names are Gabe Krause and Andrea Hunter, who began a lease on August 1st, and they would love to begin the application process. Uh, this will be their second bar and entertainment um, location. They have one in Westfield. They're really looking forward to adding to the Amherst community. And what I'm really hoping for is that you all could meet and cancel the existing license held by a former tenant of mine that no longer has possession of the space mm -hmm. under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 138, Section 77. Thank you very much. Um, so Steve, and you forwarded that to everybody? I did, yep. You yes, heard, okay. Uh, Catherine sent me an email earlier. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. So um, thank you so much for your comment. We can take that under advisement. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we can't address that. Uh, we don't have a dis discussion item on the agenda, but um, we can certainly take that under advisement. Um, thank you very much. Um, and is there anyone else here for public comment? No? Okay, thanks again. Um, and let's move on with the rest of our uh, agenda. Uh, up our common pictures license applications. Uh, one Royal Chicken and Kebab Inc. One Boldwood Walk. And is anyone here for that license, Steve? I uh, I'm not sure if anybody is here for that license. Please just raise your hand. Oh, if not, did everyone have a chance to look at the packet that Steve sent around and read through the license application? Is there anything different about this one, Steve? Um, it's uh, they're proposing a rather late night service, but there is no alcohol. It's going to be a, a chicken kebab type of places. On one rope, rope as, rope uh, as one can tell by the name. Yep. Okay, great. Are there any questions or comments about this application? I forget if I saw reading in there. Did it did it list what their hours of operation were going to be? Should be in the application. Let me pull that up. I thought I saw it in there, but I'm trying to see it again now. Midnight, yeah. And to 2 a.m. on Friday, Saturday, then, Sunday. Yep. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm Doug. always in. Uh, oh. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Doug, did you have a question? 
Well, I just wanted to ask Steve with regard to the, the hours, there's no issues regarding zoning or anything with regard to going that late. Or that um, late. I believe they are still going through the administrative review process. Um, obviously, they'll be subject to whatever restrictions zoning puts on it as well. Okay. If there are no questions, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. The Common Victor's license for Royal Chicken and Kebab Inc. at one Boldwood Walk is approved. Uh, next up, B, liquor license, change of manager application, Amherst Burger Company, LLC, 104 North Pleasant Street, Anthony Joseph Ferrari. Is there anyone here for that application? If so, raise your hand. Not nope. sure. I can um, I can double check with the applicant. We could we could move on to the next one. OK. Uh, next one. Top of the Campus, Inc., One Campus Center Way, Cynthia Narduli. And Ms. Narduli is here, correct? Is she in? Oh, here she is. And Bill Pete. OK. Hi, welcome. Hello. Thank you. Hi. So um, do you have a change of manager application? And would you like to introduce that? Uh, yeah, so this is a uh, Bill Peep from uh, top of the campus, and we've had a change in roles. So Elizabeth Curtis was the manager on the uh, license for top of the campus at the campus center. And Cynthia Narduli has uh, moved into that role. So we'd like to, we're basically just changing the manager on that license. Okay, great. Thank you. And uh, did everyone look over that license? Any questions on this one? Comments? If not, um, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Ellie. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. The change of manager application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in. Take, take care. care. You too. Um, so back to Amherst Burger. Any news? I've just reached out to them. Um, waiting to hear back. Maybe we can jump to the next topic. Okay, ABCC note ABCC notices a violation. So um, I did pass along to you. Um, the ABCC did have um, three of their their uh, violation um, no, uh, reports um, for uh, Simra LLC Amherst Market on Triangle Street. Oh and yeah. So I thought I would just pass those along to you for your information. Okay. Good question, if I could. Oh yeah, sure. Go ahead. Steve, do you have any idea of when they'll actually, because uh, that, that'll go to an ABCC hearing relative to that, correct? And, and do you have any sense of when that's going to happen? Yes, it should be in the email they sent me. Let me see if I can pull that up quickly. One of your, not that you know this off the top of your head. Uh, do you recall under that liquor license, do you know who the manager is? Is it because the, same employee seems to be involved in all cases here. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be just because that person always works on those evenings. <laughs> um, but I was just curious if, if that was, if, if in particular that person was listed as either um, uh, the manager or the license holder. So the hearings will be on um, a September 19th is the first one. Um, then the next one would be uh, October 3rd, and the last one would be October 24th. Um, and I will pull up um, the I, uh, there a file for that uh, licensee and see what the manager's name is. So the manager would be Atif Tazneem. I don't know off the top of my head if that if he was mentioned in um, in any of those. Um, reports Akbar
bar Assad and seeing in one of them. Yeah, that's the that's the employee. That's the, yeah. Yeah. So that's a not the manager. Yeah. Okay. All right. So do we have times for those hearings or do we have to check that out online? Um, I can provide those all to you if you're if you're interested in um, yeah, the time they'd in be case. I can forward all that information along to you. Yeah, why don't you send it along? That would be great. Thank you so much. I think it's useful to have in case somebody can attend. This is a good reminder too to reach out to the acting police chief to kind of check in because I think we're gonna see how the Amherst police are interacting with the ABCC. Yes. Just yeah, I do have a meeting uh, scheduled coming up with him. So that is a, a great reminder, Hallie, and thank you. And I will make sure to bring that up uh, to see um, see if they have been able to make any contact with them. Yeah, that would be nice. He did say he was um, working on it at our last meeting, but I don't know if there's been any progress since then. Great. And um, I have not heard back from the other applicant. I'm just realizing now um, I may have miscommunicated the time to them, so um, I would not hold that against them. Um, I don't know if the board would like to uh, continue the meeting or maybe just see if see if they get back to me or or just um, approve it as it is. It's all within your discretion. Yeah. Did, uh, did anyone see anything that jumped out at them for this application? Does it look all right? I, it looked fine. No, I mean, I'm just happy when someone proactively files the right. Exactly. Paperwork and the new manager has been, you know, profiled in the paper and so. right. Okay. Um, if that case, if there are, no one wants to continue this, if there a motion to approve the change of my manager application for Amherst Burger. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Dylan. Any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. The change of manager application for Amherst Burger has been approved. Um, okay, great. So now we go on to discussion topics. And A is marijuana regulation. Mm -hmm. And we had a meeting on, what is today, Thursday, Tuesday morning. And did Steve, did you send around that guest on sheet to everybody? I did, yeah. I sent it out that morning, and it was in the packet, too. Okay, great. So I don't know if anyone's had time to look over that. Uh, does somebody else, Dylan, did you want to kind of bring Doug up to speed? Because you were a little pretty heavily involved with that. Yeah, it looks like what we're we're looking to do is we're taking uh, the approach of trying to write uh, kind of a proposal bylaw for the council. Uh, Gaston's going to be taking lead on that and then doing uh, local regs. I was going to take lead on that. I was probably going to take uh it's going to be some of the what Wooster is looking to do and then kind of build off i think the regulations you have been working on doug is kind of the approach that we're looking to take um and we're really kind of aiming to get uh something to the board back on those in september um for everybody to review that's where we're at now um we kind of had that standalone meeting and the takeaway was we probably won't do a standalone meeting again until um we actually have something to meet about uh, and that's kind of where we're at yeah so um there'll be an update on is it september 7th is the next the next one i think that's it so, uh, at five so, and um, like i thought the the articles were both very interesting so and is that the one i got from the gazette is that the uh host community agreement is not necessarily going away is that the I didn't say that it was, but it. The article said that. Change is coming, yeah, but not. Change a... is coming, but. Okay, well, anyway, lots to. Lots um, to think. Yes, there was an ahead. article in Mass Live, I think, two weeks ago. I can look for it, but I think the. Cannabis Commission is in chaos right now, so I wouldn't expect. Oh really? Okay. Um, their chair stepped down and kind of has left them in the lurch. I'll look for the article, but it, it sounds like they're trying to get their bearings right now. So I don't know if Okay, gonna, all right, um, okay. Imminently. Well, okay, great. So, um, well, we have the seventh to look forward to, to kind of get into that a little bit more. Um, thanks a lot, Dylan. Thank you. Question um, about that one. Um, Steve, when does, when does the Cannabis Control Commission meet? And 
how do we how do we see their meetings? Are they in person? I don't know actually. I think you can view them online. Um but I could try to look into that for you guys and, and let you know. Well, they're... What, uh... Their next meeting is September eighth at ten a.m. So oh, okay. might uh might see about attending those meetings if I can ever make them. Yeah, that would be interesting. Are those on online or are they just? They are. You can meet. <clears throat> I just looked up and I'm actually looking at their August tenth meeting notice, but it's um they're in person with remote access via Teams Live. So I Microsoft. Okay. So I think it's possible to kind of tune in, as it were, um, much like people do to our meetings. Okay, cool. Great, thank you. Um, anything else on this for today? If not, uh, rental regulation. So uh, everyone has the current copy of the rental bylaw and regulations and the first discussion is coming up in September before I think at town council, the September 8th, which meeting is that? Is that correct? So um, I don't know, if, does anybody have anything else on this? Anything else to add? No? Okay. All right. Um, if nothing else, we can move on to lunch carts and food trucks. So I just wanted to update you all. I am still um, moving forward with that idea. I've had a lot of um, buy-in from different stakeholders in town and tomorrow morning I'll be meeting with the town engineer on site to to look at uh ideas that might work to um to lay that out so hopefully um the next meeting we could uh have um maybe some uh amendments to the uh regulations and and take care of anything else that needs to be taken care of and try to have that pilot this fall okay great Doug and then Dylan this is particularly related to Prey Street I believe yes Prey Street okay Right, so it's about expanding identified locations as well as um, sort of cooperative approach relative to that, right? Yeah, potentially, um, potentially uh, closing part of the street for uh, that activity to take take place safely. So, um, yeah, expanding the, the approved locations for that when um, when uh, when practical. All right. Great. Thank you, Dylan. Did you have a question? Uh, same question then. Oh, the the, same the, one. The, right. that the idea is yeah we're talking about the prey street moving it on all, all over there um are we thinking another mention we're, we're still thinking the parking lot or are we thinking even just along prey street uh while we're while we're talking about that oh, right we, there was some discussion about that yeah the um, idea related. we've been discussing would be to um you know close off part of the street closest to north pleasant street mm -hmm. um and um you know so a small section of the street there and allow the food trucks a place to uh to park and people to mill about without uh, risking walking into traffic. And that would just be and, done, you know, on particular particular weekend nights. Make, make it happen, Steve. I think it'll be super cool having that there. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, uh, I think we've got a lot of positive feedback so far, so we will um, we'll see. I've been looking forward to meeting with him tomorrow. Uh, what, um, what needs to happen at the uh, the council level um, for this to happen? Does it have to be a bylaw amendment? I believe the uh, – I spoke to the town manager about it. I think we have to look in a little bit further, whether it would be something he can do under the powers that are delegated to him or whether it would need council action. So that is another loose end we will have to tie up. Uh, remember, everybody, it's campaign season. So, uh, <laughs> you know, get out there and start uh... – <laughs> I've already, I've got, I don't know who's in district one, Freke Ete, he's running. You got to support him. He's the guy. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be lobbying him hard. It's like, look, you got my support, but Prey Street, it's got to happen. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Doug. A quick question for Steve. You're talking about feedback you've gotten. I mean, a um, couple of questions on that. Have you heard anything from the, um, uh, either like a Garcia's, which is just a couple doors down. Uh, I know that the spoke's probably fairly positive because they don't do a lot of food service, so they're looking for any options that somebody else can provide that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Ida and uh, I'm drawing a blank on the other one that's in the One East Pleasant. Um, and then, of course, there's construction going on right now next to One East Pleasant. Um, so have any of those folks given particular feedback about 
they like or dislike or or whatever. I mean, I think about brick and mortar businesses often struggle with with food trucks just because it's a competition that doesn't have some of the fixed costs they have. At the same time, you know, um, you know the the you know sort of apartments there might find it welcome. They might also find it a nuisance. So I'm just curious if anybody's commented relative to that. Uh, the feedback I've gotten from the restaurant community has has generally been positive. I think um, what I've heard is a lot of them are dealing with more uh, more business than they they have the uh, capacity to to deal with. I haven't spoken to Garcia's in particular, although I think it will be important before uh, anything is launched to make sure to touch base with all the businesses um, right in that area. And um, I think it would be launched on kind of a a pilot basis uh, to see how it works and see if there's any feedback. Um, certainly for this. Uh, this fall does that answer your question or yes thank you great thanks anything else on this topic lunch carts and food trucks if not uh let's move on to upcoming meetings and agendas our next one is september 7th thursday at five o'clock um and then the next thursday the third Thursday in September, which is the 21st. Um, and I think at the seventh, we can probably decide if we need another meeting on marijuana regulation or when to schedule another meeting on marijuana regulation. I know everyone's schedule is sort of in flux in September uh, because we're all tied to the, so most of us tied to the academic community and Dylan has, has, has his job. So um, we can look forward to working that out the next time. Um, and are there anything else that needs to go on to the agenda in the future, or should we just move on to topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting? Yes, Doug. Just talking about topics, you know, given the hearing schedule for the uh, ABCC, I think the, um, that first one was in September. What was it again, uh, Steve? It was, I think the 19th. It was the 19th. Yeah. Yeah. So on the 21st, we'll, we theoretically would be able to kind of perhaps have that on there just to discuss, you know, sort of how the ABCC approached it. Right. But one of one or more of us in this group in this group might be able to attend and, and watch. Probably not likely me, but I don't know if others might have, you know, opportunity to tune in. But it would be interesting to sort of see how they approach that given that they know in advance of multiple violations of a similar sort. Right. You know, the first one. Kind of it, it might be helpful for us when we're dealing with our own, just to sort of see how they deal with that circumstance. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'm okay. surprised they didn't schedule them all in one day, but um, I'll make a so note of that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, anything else for upcoming meetings and agendas? If not, uh, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Anyone topics coming up? Dylan? I mean, I mean, we all know, we all know it's coming up. Uh, I think, do we want to, uh, are we looking to avoid kind of a repeat of the high horse situation of having to act as kind of a uh, intermediary between landlords and, and tenants? Or have we, uh, I, I know we talked about it after the high horse, and then we never really kind of came to a conclusion of a, a decisive way right. to sort of handle these situations. Um, right. It's, uh, I mean, is it, do we, are we going to hear something like that? It open something up to allow for, I don't know, somebody to respond to their license being taken away or I don't know what, what's going to be our kind of in general procedure for this type of thing. What do we kind of decide on? This is in response to Hazel's. Uh, it looks like Hazel's is a, uh, uh, going to be that situation again um i know we had kind of talked about trying to get something more more general for this hazel type of situation yes um but in kind of standardizing it rather than doing you know kind of a, a case by case right landlord dispute system uh because right. i think yeah i could yeah that is certainly a good point be unfair about how we should handle them in general because it has come up before actually twice yeah. it was uh, it was high horse and then lit right yes yeah. was another one I did um, take a quick look through our uh, liquor licensing regulations, and I don't think there was anything specifically about this situation. Um, I did um, reach out and give the uh, the owner and manager of uh, Hazel's a call today to try to see um, 
see what's going on. And um, I left him a voicemail. I was unable to to uh, get in touch with them today. Could we okay. invite them to our next meeting before we take action on anything and see? Because I know that's with High Horse. I think it was over a few meetings before we made a decision. Because I think we didn't we give the owner of High Horse some time because he was looking for a new location. We uh, we remember that we revoked it uh, then and there. Okay. The uh, I, I think uh, the reason was if somebody does not have access to a um, their licensed premises, they cannot hold a liquor license, liquor license. for that premises. Yeah. Was the idea, right. but you know it's one of these ones where then what do we need to do about it? Because if they, they don't hold it, then they don't hold it. And then if we're voting, are we obligated to vote yes? And if so, then what's the point of our vote if we don't have a, if we can only vote yes. Uh, so I don't think we kind of ever ironed out the details of that, hoping it wouldn't come up ever again. And yet here we are, not yes. that long after. Yeah, that's right. The board's certainly not obligated to take any action. Um, and I would be happy to um, reach out to, to uh, Hazel's and invite invite the owner to um, just uh, discuss with the board and update. Uh, if, if I take your suggestion, Hallie, a non non disciplinary hearing, but just to invite him in to, to discuss what's going on and what his plan for the future is, the next meeting, I could certainly do that if the board's so inclined. Uh, Doug, a couple things. Um, one, Steve, is is the particular license that they have? Uh, do we no longer have any open licenses? So it is a circumstance where. Um, this prevents the, well, I guess you can't have two licenses in the same spot even if there was one available. That's one piece of it. The other thing is, as you know, and you and I had a brief conversation a little while ago about, you know, you can't renew the license. So that puts them on the clock anyway. You know, by December 31st, they either have to, have, you know, apply for it, secure the premises and apply for a change in location. Um, at the same time, I think, you know, and again, this is part of the conversation we need to have is how long do we allow a non-tenant or non uh, uh, person without access to a property to hold hostage the business, the new business in that location. Um, I think that's that's what happened with Lit. Is that the, right. yeah the business owner held onto the license and the owner had to come in because uh, they no longer had access to the premises. Isn't right. that what I think that's what happened, right, Steve? I think it was, um... and he was just sitting on it to kind of. I don't know exactly what what was what was going on, but yeah, he was yeah. um he was uh he did have the license there, and he no longer had control. And yeah, the board right. is um is able to revoke in that circumstance. Um, okay. I think case law supports, but um, the board is not obligated to take any action. You're right, Doug. Um, the uh they would not be eligible for renewal because um you have to sign under penalties of perjury at renewal time that you have control of the premises. So, um, I think that's that's and we do have uh. 10 liquor licenses available of the type that Hazel's has. So, but I, so I, but I think the uh, concern for um, like in real estate and Miss uh, Kibroli is that uh, um, there, you know, nobody else could apply for a license um, there while somebody else holds one. Right. I think, I think the question for us is, is maybe that's sort of central to this is, is what's a reasonable time frame to allow someone to pursue other options for location. Uh, that seems fair, but not punitive to the, to, in, the in this case, the landlord. I mean, obviously, in this circumstance, they took action for eviction in April. It got finalized August 1st. You know, so if you're the tenant, you're, you know, and you think you might prevail in that circumstance, then you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be put under the gun and be looking for other properties previous to a, you know, final judgment on that. At the same time, you know, the the landlord's thinking, well, we told them to go away in April, and now it's four months later. Now we have to wait another four months to get the property back for, for our new tenant. You know, so I, I think those are the kind of the, how long is is long enough? What's what's reasonable? Um, you know, uh, to have success. You know, because what we really want is success for all of them, right? Uh, we want them all to have good, you know, business outcomes for everybody. But yeah, definitely. That's. I think that's the thing we should ponder over the you know the few weeks. But I think it's worthwhile to come in, you know, ask them to come in and, and talk about their you know what their plans are. Everybody think that's a good idea. Agree on that. Yeah. 
for the next yep. so see if, if you could please arrange that for the seventh yep so um would you like me to draft draft a letter from the from the board um inviting him to come to the next meeting in a non-disciplinary uh, fashion just to just to update the board and the and the status yes does that sound good to everybody yep. yeah okay all right i will yeah. do so if I could add just kind of one more thing to get us kind of thinking about this, uh, thinking about it, and then unless anybody has a, a better idea, possibly even adoption of the idea firing from the hip here, but even something like if we do adopt in our regulation for this type of situation that should uh, a licensee lose control of access to the building, that they're automatically will have it revoked one month or say maybe two months from the time of eviction. We could just simply put that in there. And that that can change uh, can become either sooner or uh, later based on the request of a um, ad, you know tenant or uh, property owner. We could put it in there, and we could officially say yes, we will act in that capacity in the dispute. But to have something just kind of on the books that it's like if nobody's making a compelling case either way, it's like all right, you know what? It's two months. That's what it is. Two months the license returns, and we could we could do something like that if, if people like that kind of an idea mm -hmm. that way we've got just kind of the rules written out um you know if we feel that a applicant is holding a license hostage cool we'll, we'll move it up if we feel like they're getting pushed out and they're really making efforts to find okay. something they need more time uh, you know open that as well but that's just kind of my general thinking of an approach and every circumstance the board would have to um hold a formal formal hearing with uh, notice to the licensee and everything but um it certainly seems like something that would uh merit um you know further uh inclusion in our rules and regulations because uh, we've seen similar situations before so yeah well uh i'll see if between now and the hopefully our next meeting i'll see if i can talk to uh jason DiCaprio over at the high horse because uh I think he'd have might have a sense of what that time frame looks like. So, you know, I'm not trying to pull in a, uh, some time frame out of the ether um, and see if I can get some information on that, too. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dylan. Doug. The other thing I would suggest is if, there, I mean, other communities have had this happen. I mean, obviously, it's a little different. You know, if all your licenses are gone, you know, then they have, that, you know, then they have monetary value that can be sold. So it's a different circumstance. But obviously, um, uh, you know, in, in communities that haven't hit, hit their quota, then there there might be others that have dealt with this issue and and have some strategy. So it might be worth a little research in that area. That's a good idea. I didn't even consider that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, great. So Steve, you will draft that letter, and we'll see if we can have the people from Hazel's attend a meeting. And would you would you like me to would the board like me to just um run for you know run that by Marion before being sent out? Would that make sense or? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Is that is that fine? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um. Anything else? Um. Any other topics not reasonably anticipated forty eight hours prior to the meeting? Anything else? No. Okay. If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, we'll take a vote. Dylan? Aye. Hallie? Aye. Doug? Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. We're adjourned at 5.35 p.m. Thanks, everybody, and see you on the 7th. You in September. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.